for customers, sometimes I think I'd, I don't expect them to know how hard it's been and what um, small business owners are going through, but that a little bit of kindness and a little bit of patience would go a long way, um, I guess, in helping us also to keep positive and, and keep you know carrying on. Melbourne has emerged from lockdown at number four, but it certainly doesn't mean that things just snap back to the way they were. Today, we are talking to a business owner, Elisa Mariani. She uh, has a really interesting story because she has businesses that have, have managed to negotiate the various uh, trials and tribulations of the past 18 months in different ways. She owns Mayday in Richmond and Maverick in the CBD. Elisa, welcome to Dirty Linen. Thanks, Danny. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm glad to have you here. I wish we could just chat about great cafe life and, you know, all the good things to eat and drink in Melbourne. But of course, you're just in the thick of getting back up and going. Tell me how you're feeling about everything at the moment. Um, look, I guess at the moment, probably a little bit defeated, um, uh, maybe a little bit apprehensive uh, after this lockdown. And tell me why. Tell me what sort of things are going through your mind. Probably, I guess it's the result of... Um, everything that we've probably gone through in the last few months. Um, you know, I guess probably heard from a lot of other people as well in the industry that it's taken a lot of effort to sort of try and rebuild and recover from the last few lockdowns. And um, to have this happen again after, you know, being, what are we, was the last lockdown was February. So it's been a few months and slowly building everything up to have it then all come sort of crashing down again. Um, I guess that's only leaves you feeling a little bit defeated. Um, yeah. Mm. So you've got the you've got the business in Richmond, which I guess you know it's a bit of a neighbourhood. Um, and we've heard from a lot of people that you know the suburbs have been able to weather the various storms a little bit easier than the CBD, which obviously depends on that influx of workers every day. Tell us about the differences between Maverick and May Day. Yeah, I guess like for instance with um, this lockdown that we just had, um, Mayday was able to stay open and do um, some takeaway trade. Like each, I think each time there's a lockdown, it's different and it's um, you know you sort of see it shift a little bit in you know how it goes. Um, but you know we've got Maverick in the CBD and we've also got Greta and they were both sort of in the works before COVID and opened. Maverick opened last June and Greta opened in January this year. And because they're in the CBD, staying open for takeaway isn't really a viable option, you know, especially like in a lockdown where the orders are that you must work from home if you can, then, you know, nobody's going to the CBD. Yeah, and of course I didn't mention Greta, which is such a new business. It must be so dispiriting to, yeah, just be on this roller coaster and, the energy that you put into rebuilding. And, of course, you know, your businesses are part of the CBD's recovery. We absolutely need businesses like yours to be those draw cards, to look after those office workers when they do come back. But, I mean, yeah, you can't just be waiting forever, can you? Well, they know. That's right. And I think, like, because, because we have been very new to the CBD, you know, we've tried to open up after the lockdowns and, you know, build a community in the CBD, you know, staff and, and a customer base and, um, you know, slowly chipping away at the past few months, which, you know, I think we felt like we were getting to a point where we were feeling, you know, good about, you know, the direction it was going and, you know, um, yeah. And then all of a sudden <laughs> it's back to this again. So I think, you know, the CBD definitely – it's different to what it was before. There's a lot of empty places in the CBD already, um, you know, new places as well, which is great. But if if workers aren't going back to the city, then how do how do you build? How do you rebuild? And how do you recover? We heard in the um, announcement about the reopening and the restrictions that went with it that a business is office buildings were restricted to 25% of worker capacity. How did that make you feel? Not, not very confident, I suppose. It, it, you know, every time there's a um, limits put on office capacity and you know the mandate to wear masks inside, you know, I know it's a safety a safety um, measure, but when that happens, um, you know, the confidence is gone not only for us but also for people who frequent the CBD because you know 
they've been told that it's not basically not safe to go back just yet, so it's best to work from home. And I think even last time when it, we opened up initially with, um, you know, I don't know if it was this, at the 25% mark, but it gradually built then to 50%, 75%. The city wasn't there yet. Like we, we never got to that to that point, even though it was allowed. So um, I think it's a little bit crushing because I, I have this feeling that what it's going to be like when we get back back to business. It's it must be so hard to offer that upbeat, welcoming hospitality experience when you're feeling like this, and of course to energize your staff to create that experience for customers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's we've done it we've done it once. Um, now we have to try and you know refocus and try and do it again. But I suppose you know that that energy that's required to do that sort of diminishes, and if if we each time we have a lockdown, it's going to, I guess it makes it a little bit harder. Like we, at the end of the day, we have no choice. Like we're small operators and we, we need to get up and show up and, you know, and do it. And I think like, I think we do a good job. I definitely try. Um, and, you know, for the most part, like customers um, can see that. But I think sometimes as well it's, it's hard and sometimes cracks might show a little bit. But, yeah, like I said, we just have to get up and keep pushing forward. I remember when we reopened after the long lockdown last year and I wrote about May Day, your Richmond cafe, and really celebrated it for the way that you were adhering to all the COVID safe restrictions in terms of, you know, the QR check-ins and in terms of the spacing, staff wearing their masks properly. You know, everything seemed so great you know like you were just I just felt like it was a really safe place to be you were really on the side of recovery um and it's not an easy thing to do to institute all those systems when you're you know behind the eight ball as a business I mean how do you approach this sort of you know dealing with restrictions and finding your way through them all and then leading your teams uh to implement them I mean, I think like, you know, it's we, as as a, a business operator, like you need to be on top of, you, you know, the news and the restrictions and the guidelines and, you know, um, everybody had to create their, their COVID safe plan. And I think that was probably like a handy way to um, to help businesses sort of get organized and, and you know, um, plan ahead and, and be prepared for reopening in a, a safest way that, you know, possible. So, um, yeah, I think just being organised and, um, you know, preparing the COVID safe plan and um, rolling it out that way was probably how we approached it. Mm. And was, you know, what do you think it's going to be like this time? Do you feel like it's going to, your staff are just really well drilled or do you have new staff that you have to train up? Is it is it harder to sort of, you know, muster the energy to keep everything ship shape? Well, I think um, I think in like depending on where where we're focusing on, I think if Mayday, you know, a lot of the staff have been there for some time now, and they've, um, you know, they did it in February and um, you know earlier on in the year when we were still building out of the the big lockdown. So I think that they're a little bit familiar with how it goes and what's involved. Um, I think in the city, again, well, the city is probably a little bit different because we've, you know, had some changing of staff or, um, you know, lots of new staff because obviously we've tried to recover and rebuild or, or build from scratch, I guess, starting new with Greta. Um, so there's been, you know, the need to kind of, kind of just recruit as um, as the businesses grow. So there are going to be new staff involved in that respect, but I think that um, both Adam, who he's running, my brother, who's my business partner, He's running Greta and, you know, he's done this before and so have I. So, you know, I think that we'll be able to, um, again, implement these, um, you know, safety measures. And, um, yeah, I think the staff will have no issue. And how hard have you found it to find and retain staff? Look, I think we, um, in the hospitality industry, it's staffing is probably one of the most difficult things always has been but not as hard as it has been probably over the last you know eight months or so um i think that finding staff or skill probably properly skilled staff has been quite difficult 
Um, and I, for, for us sort of in the CBD where things can change quite rapidly from one week to the next, you know, you, you like, you need to hire somebody else because things might pick up that little bit more where you need, need more staff. Yeah. It's, it's been quite challenging. Can you tell us a bit of the backstory of how you come to be in business with your brother, with these three cafes? Yeah, sure. Um, well, my brother, he's been in hospitality probably for 13 years or so. Um, myself, I was a high school teacher um, prior to sort of getting into hospitality. Um, I worked in high schools teaching food technology and health and also was a welfare officer at, for some time. And then um, I just decided to make a bit of a change and I set up a little baking business in the in the city. Um, I have an, another brother who has um, a bar in the CBD. So I would go in and bake in his kitchen at night and then deliver to um, cafes in the city. Wow. And, um, yeah, so it was a big change. But, um, yeah, and then eventually I started to um, – I got in, got involved with um, Adam at, at Mayday and started to work my way up and, you know, learn all the facets of running a hospitality business. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed, you know, the sense of community and, um, you know, um, you know, having gained more skills and, um, yeah. And then I that, that led to, I guess, what, five and a half years later we've had Mayday um, wanting to kind of branch out and, you know, try something a little bit different with Greta and get into the CBD and, you know, again, it's a different sort of crowd and a different um, setting, but, yeah, here we are. <laughs> um, what are you looking, thinking about your previous career in high schools? I mean, gosh, I've got two kids at high school and I admire the teachers so much for helping shepherd the kids through but I mean it's immensely challenging on both sides would you rather be a hospitality owner through this or a high school teacher <laughs> I've actually been asked that quite a few times in the last 18 months <laughs> as you would imagine um I because I still have quite a few friends who are who are teachers um uh look I I think I I still prefer to be in hospitality I don't I don't know what what I don't know if it would be easier being in in teaching in schools. You know, every time we have a lockdown, there's remote learning and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I I love hospitality. I love what I do, and I, you know, I want to keep doing it. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully these lockdowns don't happen too 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 more, much more down the track. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. I mean, what are you planning? What What's the opening plan in the city? Are you going to open both businesses? What sort of, are you, you know, choosing the hours very carefully? What kinds of considerations do you have to bring into play? It's it's really hard to know how this, um, re, you know, restart is going to go this time around. I mean, there's different factors at play. Like it's, it's winter now, so I know that that might play a part, but I think at this point we're both, we're going to open both Greta and Maverick from Tuesday. Um, with regular hours, so 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And I think Greta does aperitivo nights up until 8 um, on Friday nights. So we want to try and maintain that. It's just it's hard once you make a change and then you want to change back. Um, so at this point, we're going to stick with that and just see how it goes and see how long it takes for, you know, the further lifting of restrictions because that will play a big part in how quickly things possibly bounce back this time. Yeah, so in terms of the the office worker restrictions and the hospitality density restrictions, I mean, is there one of those metrics that you look at more closely that you're hoping eases or is it just a general sort of move back to normality that you're looking for? I think it's all, all of those factors, um, you know, even, even the mask mandate because I think last time, even though we opened back, when was it February, we had the five-day lockdown, we opened up and... Um, because there was still a, a mask mandate in place that stopped people from coming back to work because they could work from home without having to wear a mask all day. So, yeah, definitely the one per four square metre um, and the, you know, the caps on um, office density, that will will play a big part as well. It's just such a patchwork of 
things that sort of have to slowly step forward just bit by bit and then you hope it's just one step forward after another and not one step forward and two steps back as we've been dealing with. Absolutely. It ha- has felt a little bit like that over the past few months, I suppose, and having been having been back in this spot again with the lockdown, I, I just hope that, you know, we stay hopeful and we stay pos- positive that it won't happen again. But at the same time, it's definitely, you know, a realistic part of where we're at. We're still in a pandemic. It's not over. Yes, indeed. Um, Elisa, one thing that was really different about this lockdown is that there was no job keeper, so people had no income support. And I think hospitality businesses um, obviously realised that instantly, that their staff, um, if they had to be stood down or lose shifts, there was no income replacement for them. You were one of many businesses that stepped up and tried to help. Um, can you talk about what you did um, in terms of looking after people in the community? Um, I think, like, this time, this time around, I think the lockdown felt quite, quite, quite tough. And I know that, obviously, with no job keeper, um, a lot of people, you know, living week by week or you know, paycheck to paycheck, uh, it made it very tough. And even though we did have some financial assistance offered in the end, it wasn't immediate, and it's two weeks later. So it's meant that people have gone without pay up until two weeks after being shut down, and. So we, we just thought, you know, what can we do to try and um, help help out or, you know, brighten up somebody's day. And, you know, at the end of the day, we we have, like everybody, you know, stock and, you know, prep that's already done um, at May Day. And so we just thought, you know, what how can we how can we get it out there? So we, we just decided to offer little bits of, um, you know, whatever we had going. We had some hash browns there and waffles that we were – um, giving away with people's coffee in the morning and yeah very welcomed and put a lot of smiles on faces so you know it's good to do a little bit if you can um, more if you can um, yeah. Do you think that I mean I agree with you I think this lockdown did feel really tough but I also feel like people really identified the need that was out there in the community and that, you know, so many people do live really lean from paycheck to paycheck. Do you feel like there was a bit of a different feeling in the community around that this time? Yeah, I think um, from what, from my experience over the last couple of weeks, there's definitely been that I think a lot of people felt a bit of a Groundhog Day feel, but there was also, um, you know, people coming out, but also it felt a bit quieter around as well, you know, um, compared to the last lockdowns and how they felt. So I think, you know, that's just a sign to show that people people are really, you know, trying to look after, um, you know, like save money and, you know, get through, get through what is a really tough time. And also the fact that we didn't really know how long this was going to go for after originally being told seven days to then have another seven days added. And even at that point, not really knowing if that, was going to be the end of it. So that uncertainty really makes it tough. And I, I think that's why it felt a bit quieter around and um, seeing less people out and about. Yeah, I think you're right. People are really bunkering down. It was, you know, the weather was colder and, yeah, there was that uncertainty. And I think, yeah, there was just a bit less, there's, everyone's just got a bit less energy to throw it in <laughs> lockdown and getting through it. But it was so heartening to see businesses like yours um, just, yeah, as you say, like a, a waffle or a hash brown is is lovely, but it's that feeling of being looked after that I think people really appreciate as well. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So, Elisa, if we look look forward, I mean, how optimistic are you feeling about the, the three businesses and about the, the months ahead for Melbourne? Um, I think, you know, we try to stay optimistic and positive, but like I said earlier, like every time we we go into a lockdown, that optimism sort of wavers a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I feel I'm, I'm hoping that the city – specifically um, will bounce back quicker than it did last time. But, you know, we the only way that's going to happen is if we give the confidence back to people to come back to work. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that it will be quicker than last time, but time will tell. It's, it's hard to say. You know, we, we, we had such a – we had 
gotten the businesses in the CBD specifically to a good point where, you know, we were feeling quite confident and knowing that it was going in the right direction. But now, you know, that my confidence and that, you know, optimism is a little bit, yeah, is a little bit defeated. Well, I hope the customers that you do have will buoy you and be kind and generous. What would you like to see from diners out there in the community? Um, I think like you said, like just um, kindness goes a long way. I know for us, I think like for May Day, you know, we've been there for, like I said, for five and a half years and we have, you know, a big regular customer base and, you know, generally um, it's it's yeah, it's pretty great. Um, in the city, again, we've also grown like a regular customer base as well, both at Maverick and Greta. And you know, I, I I'm pretty sure I'm hopeful that we'll see them when we come back. Um, but for customers, sometimes I think I I don't expect them to know how hard it's been and what um, small business owners are going through. But that a little bit of kindness and a little bit of patience would go a long way. Um, I guess in helping us also to keep positive and and keep you know carrying on. Yeah, I think that energy exchange really has to be mutual, and it. I mean, you, I can hear it in your voice. It's so hard, and I just think people have to really, I guess, help not only inject money into businesses, but inject a bit of um, positivity and love and hope. Um, so I really hope that customers do meet you with that mutual project of just looking after everyone. Um, Elisa, you mentioned to me that you're getting vaccinated today. Yes, looking forward to that. <laughs> How are you feeling about it? Uh, it's a big day. I mean, I'm, you know, if there's one thing that um, turning 40 is good for, <laughs> this is definitely it. I, um, I guess, yeah, I, I, I tried to get an appointment as soon as I could when they announced it going into lockdown. And, um, yeah, this is one thing that we can do to try and get, you know, get our lives to a bit of normal and hopefully avoid going into further lockdowns once, um, you know, the masses have, have signed up and, and been vaccinated. So, yeah, I'm feeling like, a, yeah, it's a good day. Yeah, amazing. Well, I felt so grateful, like almost weepy when I got vaccinated. It was just like, oh, my God, I can't believe that this is available and um, that I can do it. It definitely feels like something that anyone who's able to get vaccinated, it's definitely a good day for the community. So um, good on you. I hope that um, you feel wonderful <laughs> don't have too many ill effects but I think my GP said to me that if you do feel um, ill effects after getting vaccinated it means you've got a very frisky immune system so <laughs> um, my immune system is pretty frisky uh, but yeah it's a it's a yeah it was a great feeling um, Elisa is there anything else that you'd like to say um, no I think like I guess you know uh, I guess like I just want to say thanks for, for giving, um, getting me on today. And I think, um, as a small operator, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to, to get your voice out there. So I really, I'm really grateful that you, um, you invited me to get on, on the program today and yeah, um, just to get the voice out there. And, uh, I guess like for us, sometimes it's hard, it's hard, I guess, sometimes as a small operator for us to sort of make big changes and sudden changes at times like this. And, um, you know, advertising and things like that. So it's um it's it's good to be able to get on and um and have a chat. Thank you so much. Oh no, look, it's absolutely a, a pleasure and I mean I really admire what you're doing as a small business owner and I'm really grateful to you that you you're in the city and you you're gonna be part of the solution in so many ways. Um we bring that Melbourne feeling back. So thanks to you and your brother and your team, Elisa, and um enjoy getting jabbed and we'll stay in touch. Thanks so much, Danny. Cheers. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This.